and Russia says it will continue to strike at the weapons delivery provided by the United States and Europe for Ukraine. And that's according to its defense ministry. Earlier, the ministry said Russian troops hit a military airport near Odessa, uh, Ukraine, where foreign delivered weapons were stored. The ministry said Russian troops had launched large-scale attacks on weapons sent from the U.S. and Europe to Ukraine in recent days with lots of weapons destroyed. Russia has repeatedly accused the U.S. and Western countries of adding fuel to the fire by sending weapons to Ukraine, stressing that it will attack U.S. and NATO vehicles transporting weapons inside Ukraine as legitimate targets. And in keeping with that promise, Russia resumed its assault on the last Ukrainian defenders on the steel plant in Mariupol days after Moscow declared victory in the city and said its forces did not need to take the plant. Uh, Mariupol, the biggest battle of the conflict so far, has raged on for weeks as Russia seeks to capture the city, seen as vital to its attempts to link the eastern Donbas region with Crimea, which Moscow seized in 2014. Ukraine's army was not ready to try to break through the siege of the port city by force, according to President Vladimir Zelensky. But he told reporters at an evening news conference that Kiev had every right to do so. Let's talk now to Mr. Olua Leke at Tolagbe, who is an assistant counsel at the International Criminal Court. He joins us virtually uh, from Abuja. Good morning and thank you for your time. Welcome uh, to the program. Thank you for having me. All right, then let, let's, let's, let me quickly begin by asking a question that probably will be on the lips of quite a number of people who are watching this conflict from afar. Do you believe that indeed uh, on either side, uh, crimes against uh, humanity, war crimes, uh, possibly genocide is going on? Uh, well, thank you once again. I believe um, evidence will eventually reveal whether there are, there are uh, crimes against humanity, genocide, war crimes, or the crime of aggression. I understand and that there are reports that, for instance, um, the, the uh, prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, as a Khan Karim, Karim Khan, QC, has already commenced investigation into activities that might have taken place during this two months war. As they say, that even war has rules. That's the reason why the Geneva Conventions uh, provide different rules for such uh, wars. There are things that should not be done. There are reports, for instance, I think around Bucha, uh, the outskirts of, uh, of Kiev, the capital of uh, uh, Ukraine, that there are mass graves and um, the satellite images are showing that some war crimes might have been committed, that is probably killing some civilians and some other uh, people that are not supposed to be touched during war. Because during war, it's supposed to be between the military. Now, if there are evidence that such crimes are committed, then it will now be up to the International Criminal Court to go ahead with uh, pre-trial and then trial. However, however, I believe that um, a number of issues may be involved here. We should, we should be reminded that uh, Neither Ukraine nor Russia is a party to the Rome Statute. Therefore, therefore, ordinarily, the International Criminal Court is not supposed to have jurisdiction over activities that may happen in such places. However, I think sometime 2013, 
I understand that um, Ukraine uh, did a resolution that the International Criminal Court should have jurisdiction over certain offenses that were committed between 2013 and maybe sometime 2014. Reports also have it that even as a that period, the whole of the activities that the International Criminal Court was called into uh, Ukraine to come and investigate, the in International Criminal Court found that there were no uh, grievous crimes that can be prosecuted by the International Criminal Court. Subsequently, they issued another uh, resolution, this time ad hoc, ad hoc resolution, that from 2014, after the Crimea attack by the Russian government, from that period onward, as if they knew there would be anything like this in 2022, that the International Criminal Court is granted jurisdiction to investigate activities of war crime, genocide, crimes against humanity, and the crime of aggression. So that gives the International Criminal Court the opportunity to investigate. And I believe that's the reason why uh, the prosecutor at the International Criminal Court, Karim Khan uh, QC, has now commenced investigation. Also, there are several countries, I think about 43 of them, that in view of this war, that have also approached the International Criminal Court, that they should carry out, that should carry out investigation into the activities that have happened during this period. That that but isn't that going to be sure isn't that, that going to be isn't that going to be a bit difficult considering the fact that the International Criminal Court does not have its people on ground in Ukraine and that a lot of the evidence that could potentially be uh, used in the prosecution of any such cases may uh, have uh, been moved, may have been tampered with, may have been even in fact destroyed uh, by the time any kind of arrangement is made for that kind of investigation to, fit, to actually take place there in, uh, in the place where those crimes were allegedly committed. Yes, these are the challenges. These are actually the challenges. But thankfully, we can see that even the International Criminal Court has already moved in. Many of the times, this kind of uh, investigations are carried out post-war. They are carried out after the war, after the crisis. But in this case, the investigation has commenced. So that gives the opportunity to investigate ahead of time. There is a challenge. I understand the area you are also coming from, which is the fact that the war is ongoing. The International Criminal Court officials and the investigators may not be able to move to site to do investigation. But no matter how little, the evidence that they can garner for now, it will be the best to carry, to get those evidence and preserve them before there will now be proper trial. I understand that the fact that there is, um, the war is still ongoing, it will make it difficult for investigators to do their work. But there are some of these evidence, as you mentioned, that can be destroyed. Therefore, it will be better that the investigation should continue that the investigation should continue, no matter how little, no matter how minimal they are able to work. They should go ahead, carry out the investigation, and then subsequently, if there is now opportunity after the war, which all of us pray that um, it will end very soon, 
after the war, then uh, more serious investigation, more detailed and uh, more in-depth investigation. So that's my, my, that's my view on that. Uh, before I let you go, I, I must ask, though, that, uh, as you said, everybody wishes that this will end at uh, a, a point soon, and that may also, in fact, help investigations, because the sooner the war is over, uh, the sooner that uh, uh, independent, impartial investigators can get onto the ground there and find out what really is happen happening and what has happened. Uh, but... Do you think, now, and I'm not asking you this in your role as an ICC person, I'm asking you this now in your role as somebody outside like me looking in, uh, do you really think that um, there are any indications that, you know, we might be seeing the end to this conflict anytime soon? I mean, the United States has just uh, announced that, you know, there'll be new aid, more weapons. Russia is uh, saying that uh, it will bomb those uh, weapons deliveries, it will consider them legitimate targets, and it is still continuing the attacks in various parts of Ukraine. So, I mean, do you, re do you really think the omens are good, I guess? I, I, I understand the omens may not be good. But it, it seems everybody is treading caution. Even though we can see um, the United States giving more ammunition, more uh, weapons, to Ukraine, I, I, there are reports. I think the, uh, uh, it was the uh, the German Chancellor that just uh, sounded a note of warning that we should be mindful not to allow this war to escalate into the Third World War. So everybody needs to be careful. Um, probably we say that uh, we should start putting putting in prayers that. Uh, God will touch his heart and the war will end. Because it's the hellier the war ends, the better for all of us. Because even at the end of the war, the question on the lips of many people would be, how easy would it be for you to try uh, Putin and some of the President Putin and some of the highly placed, highly placed generals that might have been involved in the war because Russia is not party to, to the uh, uh, Rome Statute. So even if at the end of the day, they found evidence that they can be tried, the question would be, how would you be able to, to arrest and bring such people down to um, the ICC for trial? Because they, they are not party to the... Rome Statute. And then Absolutely correct. They will not cooperate. Be, then they will not cooperate, actually. They will, they will, they will, they will not cooperate uh, from all in They will never cooperate. <laughs> Except all right, maybe then. if there is a change of government. <laughs> there is okay. a change of government in, in, in Russia, and the government decides to either prosecute the participants domestically in their own country, or agree to yield some of the people to the International Criminal Court. Indeed. Indeed. That's, that, that is the situation. Mr. Lua Leke Atolagwe, thank you so much for your time and your perspective this morning. Mr. Atolagwe joined us virtually uh, from thank, the nation's capital, Abuja. Thank you.